These are undoubtedly some of my favorite favorite series of issues. If IDW ever had a chance to make anything an animated feature of theirs, do these four issues. This comic basically flat out shows you that Bell was created by Eggman. Now as far as I was aware, Mr. Tinker never made a robot. So Tails' ignorance to it is kind of contradictory. If we're going to make Shadow a one-note grumpy guy, I'd much prefer this Shadow over the arrogant trapped in his own- <laughs> What is- Happening disappointments, my name is Cody Tang. Welcome back to the IDW series. I've got plenty to throw at you this week, but real quick, if you haven't been keeping up with my journey through this series, first of all, why not? Second, be sure to at least check out my last video so you can catch up with what's been going on. And if it's your first time going through the IDW series, we can share that special bond. You and I can experience this series together for the first time. Speaking of our first time together, as a quick disclaimer, this is my first time going through the IDW series, so please be careful about discussing spoilers in the comments below. But, with that said, let's hop right into the IDW series. Issue 35. Sonic, Tails, and Bell work together to make it out of Eggman's base. They're contacted by Rouge, telling them that they need to meet with the girls at White Park ASAP. And, wait, did, did the IDW team just assume that nobody knows what ASAP means? Well, hey, well, while you're at it, what does mean? Well, you might as well explain anything that's out of the ordinary while you're at it. Sonic and Tails agree to take Bell with them, and... <sighs> After a fun plane ride, Sonic and Belle reunite with, and meet, Amy, who has strangely been looking for Rouge, because she's nowhere to be found. It's strange because Rouge specifically requested to meet with Tails for an emergency, which even Amy says is odd, as there really wasn't an emergency at all. Regardless, they all head up to Clutch's penthouse, where Belle gets to meet Cream. Since the Chow are all locked up in a cage, the only way to get in would be by breaking the mini locks. Or, you know, they could also try breaking the cage itself, but I guess that might put the Chow in danger. Thankfully, Belle speaks up and she says that she could do a little tinkering. Did you get it? Did you get that? Because her dad's Mr. Tinker. Do you, did you- While Belle does that, Sonic decides to go and find Rouge and Tails. Once Sonic leaves, Clutch surprises everybody by revealing that he was literally playing possum. As you know, possums do. And he unleashes a robot bear to attack everybody after leaving the area himself. Amy and Gemeral are basically the only characters who can actually fight, so they're ready to fight the bear together. But then Cream screams as Bad Nick start coming out of the junk littered around the room. Why did Cream scream here? I mean, she looks perfectly fine in the panel that we see her in, so I don't understand. Does she just be screaming for no reason? While this fight is happening, we jump over to Tails and Rouge, who are enjoying a roller coaster together. Rouge reveals that she was hypnotized by somebody, and that same somebody is standing in the coaster with them. Sonic arrives, but is immediately attacked by an entire cart of the roller coaster, which makes him jump out of the way, falling into Shadow's arms. Evan, get your Sonato fanfic out of IDW. The mysterious stranger is revealed to be none other than Dr. Starline. Wait, he's hypnotizing people now? Wait, what's that say at the bottom? Check out bad guys! Oh no, another mini story? Dr. Starline lets off an explosion on the mountain, causing an avalanche to come rushing toward the chateau. This gives Sonic and Shadow a classic superhero ultimatum. Save the closest people to them, Rouge and Tails, or protect the lives of hundreds of people that they don't even know, and Sonic's other friends that he cares a lot about who are also still in the chateau. So, uh, what's gonna happen to Clutch and this penthouse once they take care of this bear? 
Clutch is just kind of going to have all this expensive junk all over the place. All right, listen to me, Tails. I suggest making like Rouge and stealing everything you can before everybody else comes through and you all complacently create the next Dr. Eggman. Or make Starline even more powerful when he steals everything here. Or ends up working with Clutch. You know, it's crazy how much the mood changes when Sonic is around. Everything seems mysterious and uncertain, but then Sonic arrives and the situation shifts to being more curious, goofy, and lighthearted. And I do actually like seeing that contrast. Allowing the audience to spend some time seeing how everybody else views the world without Sonic. Because when Sonic does arrive, he notably brings a whole other layer to the scenario. Just him being on screen is a mood shifter. And I feel like IDW kinda managed to capture that pretty well. See, once Sonic leaves and that robot bear arrives, the mood once again shifts to uncertainty because you no longer have Sonic goofing off with the villain or just waiting to one-shot the guy. It turns into a situation where now the heroes have to work together. Well, I mean, Gemeral could just one-shot the bear. But I guess he's kind of too focused on helping out Cream. So I guess that's the excuse, but he could kind of help Cream, plus help Amy, and then it's it's done, but eh. So, we once again have Dr. Starline. His introduction is interesting. There's a bit of mystique going on here with him. Of course, I'm going to have to read Bad Guys next to get the full idea of what Starline has been up to, and figure out what the deal is with these, uh, power gloves, I guess? Now, they are a nice new tool. From what we've seen, this new tool gives him super speed dashing, hypnosis, and even super strength. I'm curious to see what Starline's goal is here. See, last we saw him, he was telling us about how he was going to be starting his own empire to show Eggman how it's done. Something about Starline that is unlike Eggman, he doesn't have an abundance of lackeys to work under him, nor does he have a legion of robots to do his bidding. Well, save for the few odds and ends that he was able to nab from Eggman's millions of abandoned bases. So Starline's actually very hands-on when directly fighting these heroes, unlike Eggman who will grab the nearest robot and hop into it. I like that Starline has to be a bit more resourceful when fighting everybody. Starline is a bit of a different type of villain, at least for the time being, as he currently doesn't have an empire of his own, and it seems to just be him. He's not dumb like Rough and Tumble, but he's also not as strong as they are either. He really has to rely on his own strengths and cunning to come out on top. He still hasn't exactly found his legs yet. Even if he's obviously going to be unsuccessful in this encounter, Starline is already displaying his new capabilities. He may have lost his warp topaz, but that clearly hasn't slowed him down just yet. He's obviously after something specifically, although whether or not he meant to meet the heroes is a question on its own. I mean, upon almost coming into contact with him, he was shocked. Although it may just because they came close to seeing him, of course. Something that I really want to see IDW lean into is the fact that he's set up to be a smarter and more capable version of Eggman, and I really want them to push into that. The problem that Starline's character is currently facing is that he's just so caught up with impressing Eggman. Regardless, I'm still looking forward to seeing what Dr. Starline has planned for his upcoming empire. Even further, it'll be interesting to see how Eggman competes with an actual rivaling empire. If there's anybody that can create a counter to Eggman, then by all means it should be Dr. Starline, the guy who has studied Eggman his entire life. He should know all of his contraptions, his plans, and his failures. Especially after the Metal Virus Saga, where he was working directly with Eggman. He should be able to see his flaws and the holes in everything he does better than anybody. And to be honest, there's probably no better way to take down Eggman than through the inside of his circle. We'll have to wait to see how the Bad Guys miniseries decides to display Dr. Starline's character and what sort of changes he'll be going through during it. Dr. Starline being given the spotlight for the first time allows for his character to truly develop and come into his own. 
And the fact that it's one of IDW's original characters means that they should actually be capable of expanding on who he is. Issue... 36. Sonic decides to save the Chateau from the Avalanche with the added encouragement from Tails. On the other hand, Shadow decides to go after Dr. Starline, ignoring Rouge and Tails. Rouge, who is understandably annoyed, manages to cut herself free from her restraints. Somehow? I'm sure she's got a secret spy knife or something somewhere. Now that she's free, she summons Omega through the previous code word, where Omega proceeds to basically scream in his face. Which causes Starline to fall off the track, however his new glove abilities do allow him to safely get out of danger. Shadow's annoying demeanor and word usages are actually challenged by Rouge here. And because of that, Shadow now has to make the decision to either keep going after Dr. Starline, or actually help the people that care about him. Cool. Let's see if this rationale given to Shadow actually goes anywhere in the future. Meanwhile, back at Clutch's penthouse, the Chow get free! And with the help of the Chow, the team launches a full attack on the Robot Bear and the Badniks. Everybody manages to come out on top, and then Rouge and Tails fly down to warn the gang of the impending avalanche hurtling down their way. Shadow reunites with Sonic to help slow down the avalanche. Their first plan doesn't go very well, as it only temporarily stops the danger, meaning the avalanche is still coming down. Amy and the gang are able to get all of the citizens out of the chateau thanks to the Omo Chow's assistance. But Starline once again stops the heroes. It's revealed here that Starline was specifically searching for Tails, possibly to use his brains on some super secret project? The gang obviously have to fight Dr. Starline out because he's gonna try to kidnap Tails! So they fight him just long enough for the avalanche to get there, and they allow Starline to be hit by it directly. So now, Dr. Starline's done for now. Luckily, the chateau was created to withstand an avalanche. In the aftermath, everybody reunites outside the chateau. Tails invites Belle to work with him at his workshop, where she strangely is able to read through Eggman's blueprints with ease. This confirms that both Mr. Tinker and Eggman use the same exact coding language. With this help from Belle, Omega is allowed to finally regain his body for good. Tails calls Belle out on being able to read through Eggman's coding, attempting to ask her to be honest with him, but Belle eventually refuses to answer his questions. Finally, Dr. Starline hints to us what his plan may be, holding up vials of Tails' fur in front of two pods containing some sort of specimens inside. These are undoubtedly some of my favorite series of issues. I'm talking about issue 33 all the way to issue 36. The amount of jokes mixed with the seriousness, the interactions, conflict, mystery, of course the actual use of teamwork among all of the characters, the dialogue, the art, and the set pieces. All of it made for a very enjoyable read. I'm being 100% honest here. If IDW ever had a chance to make anything an animated feature of theirs, do these four issues. They literally have every single thing that you need to make a four episode special out of or a feature length movie. This is only four issues and Evan Stanley showed that she can expertly use every single moment of every single panel in such a great way here. It truly was like reading a bunch of stills from a movie placed into a comic book. This feels like a miniseries or a special in itself. What's crazy is that I've never fully enjoyed reading the IDW comics until I experienced these four issues. And on top of that, these four issues are basically a complete story in their own right. This is just the start of the saga. If I were a huge fan of the IDW series and I wanted to convince somebody to get into this comic, I would show them this story here. I promise you, anybody who reads these four issues without prior knowledge of this comic would be instantly hooked. They really were that good. Evan, who has been hiding you from the Sonic series for so long? I don't know how much of this story was purely Evan Stanley, but everybody who worked on this all deserves some praise for how everything was handled. But let's talk about what's going on in the issue now. 
This comic basically flat out shows you that Belle was created by Eggman. She's in one of his bases when they find her, as she's literally looking for her creator. She can read the blueprints of Eggman without extra help, which is already very strange in itself. And Belle is also extremely wary to even slightly describe or confirm who her creator is, so it's obviously somebody we already know. Again, you're not fooling me. Her creator was obviously Mr. Tinker, which would be yet another reason why she doesn't want to accept that Eggman is who made her. Let's see if IDW can make me care about her while attempting to pull this extremely obvious mystery. Something I picked up from this Belle and Tails interaction is that Mr. Tinker and Eggman both have the same exact robot code. Now as far as I was aware, Mr. Tinker never made a robot. It's also kind of interesting that their coding would be the same. Now clearly we can see that Belle would be a robot made by Mr. Tinker, so that could make sense. She is obviously an advanced AI if that's the case. But that means that all of Eggman's robots are created the same. They all share the same code that Belle has and could read. So a quick throwback to my last video, that would mean that Tails should actually know quite a bit of Eggman's coding already, since Tails reprogrammed and repaired Gemeral twice now. It made sense earlier to assume that every series of Eggman's robots had a different coding language, but through Bell, we can see that Eggman just uses a universal language that he made. They basically all run off the same game engine is what I'm saying. So Tails' ignorance to it is kind of contradictory, and it makes it obvious that the only reason he can't understand Eggman's code is because Belle would be using that same AI, and she would be able to explain it to Tails later on. But other than that, Starline is making clones! Well, my best guess is clones. Specifically the animal kind. So not an Eggman clone. Is he making Shadow Clones? Rough and Tumble Clones? Sonic Clones? Starline Clones? No, oh, of course, Tails Clones. He has the fur specimen. That's why he needed Tails. He's making an army of tiny geniuses. Starline is making a nine. I don't know why he would need Tails. Why doesn't he just clone himself? Also, is Starline working with Clutch? I could see a team up from the two if it hasn't happened already. Speaking of team ups, the Sonic and Shadow team up against the Avalanche is exactly what I wanted to see. Instead of Sonic and Shadow finding some incredibly contrived way to start punching each other in the head, the IDW team decides that they are going to have the two working together for an ultra rare moment of teamwork from them. Whoa, hold on. What the fuck are you doing? That's right. I'm talking to you! I see you over there, you little bitch! And that person behind you! You are not a part of the Eggman Empire! You don't belong here! How do I know? Because I can see that you're not subscribed to Cody Tank! <laughs> Be sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like if you've been enjoying the video so far! And if you happen to disagree with me on anything, feel free to run all of that in the comments and I'll tend to your disagreeing ass shortly. Or just leave a nice comment. I like those too. Now back to the issue. Since we're on the topic of Shadow, if we're going to make Shadow a one note grumpy guy, I'd much prefer this Shadow over the arrogant trapped in his own hubris one. Here he's standoffish and straight to the point, but he does take the time to inform people of what they actually need to know, leaving what he wants to do by himself a bit of a secret. Again, he does have a moment where he's apparently too focused on fighting Starline, but even that is remedied thanks to Rouge's suggestion, and he chooses to save people over continuing to go after Starline. This shadow works because he isn't against the heroes for no reason. He is actively working with them, even if it's in his own way. He is focusing way too much on his physical prowess though, and he's not really being very tactical in any of these fights. That's just one of my three major gripes. 
The second is that Shadow's arrogance is still there. Although I will concede that it's a bit more subtle. The final problem I have with Shadow are the words that IDW makes him use. How I understand Shadow is that when he commits to a mission, he's all in and will often even assist those who are helping him. However, if Shadow's goals aren't aligned with somebody, that's when he will often keep people in the dark about his motivations. IDW kind of gets this right. Shadow was already on Clutch's trail from the moment Amy and the gang saw him. So once Amy asked if Shadow could just stop what he was doing and go help them instead, that made sense for his character to deny the request. He basically looked at him and said, Nigga, I'm busy. Even Rouge understands that he was just giving a basic answer. Another thing IDW does that is accurate is how Shadow goes off on his own to focus on something that he wants to do. However, when Shadow's goals align with a group of people and he wants to do a specific part of his mission by himself, he will directly give the people around him something else to do or provide the details in order for them to perform a different task while he takes care of something that he knows he's capable of. As I said in the last video, Shadow is really good at delegation when everybody's following a common goal. And even more, Shadow is fully aware of what he can and can't do. Shadow will rely on other people to do what he thinks they should be capable of. That's probably the easiest way to understand how Shadow interacts with people while he's on a mission. So I'm just wondering, what's gonna happen with these Chow? Is Vanilla gonna set them up for adoption? Are they just gonna chill with Cream for the rest of the story? Or are they just gonna let them wander into the woods and let nature take its course? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be looking for that. Also, I noticed Shadow throws an apple for this Chow. So, IDW is trying to say that Shadow secretly likes Chow. It's gotta be the purity of them. Although, this one is a dark Chow. So, is there really that much purity in that one? Whoa, wait, wait, wait! Where are you going? I gotta tell you something real quick. This is a call to all of my subscribers and people who are new or constantly see my channel everywhere. The Cody Tang Discord server is up and running. From debates to unsolicited conversations about One Piece, we're starting off strong. This is your chance to get into direct contact with me and many others. I hope to see you all there. Well, damn. That was a ton of fun to read. That's all we got for this week, everybody. I hope to see all of you guys again when we check out IDW's next miniseries, Bad Guys. Like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, okay, Bob? <laughs>